You may have seen different explanations of how the self-attention mechanism works, but it is quite likely that it is still a little abstract for you. Personally, everything becomes much clearer when I see things being coded. So I'm going to show you how to implement from scratch, in PyTorch of course, the self-attention layer. I made a previous video to explain the logic behind it, so check it out if you haven't already. And today I'm just going to focus on the coding aspects. Let's get started. So to better understand how the attention layer works, we're going to implement it from scratch. This is going to really help us understand how the different tensors get to interact with each other. So we're going to create a class called attention. And to do so, we're going to import a couple of libraries. So we're going to import Torch. We're going to import the neural network package from Torch as NN. We're going to import the nn.functional as f, and we're going to create this class attention. So class attention is going to extend the neural network.module class. This is so we can create a PyTorch module. So first we're going to initialize the class, and we're going to have a couple of arguments. We're going to have the dimension in, which is the in dimension, the size of the incoming vectors that are going to come into the attention layer. And we're going to have the out dimension, which is the size of the inner vectors that we're going to have in the attention. So the queries, the keys, and the values, they are going to have a specific dimension. This is going to be the d out dimension. So first we initialize the superclass, the nn.module class, and we're going to mark as attribute of the class, the different arguments that we have in the init function. So the d in and the d out. We're going to start by instantiating the different linear layers that we need within the attention layer. So we're going to have the nn.linear. It's going to take as the number of input features d in, which is the size of the incoming vectors. And the number of output features is going to be d out. We're going to repeat this three times. So this is going to be for the K matrix. We called WQ, WK, and WV matrices in the slides, but here we're going to call them capital Q, capital K, and capital V. So we're going to have the number of input features to be D in, the number of output features to be D out. And we're going to repeat the same thing for the self.V linear layer. So this is for the init function. Now we're going to create the forward function. So the forward function is going to have as input a uh, input tensor. We're going to create the queries, the keys, and the values by using the different matrices. We have the Q matrix, the K matrix, and the V matrix. So we're going to create the queries, the keys, and the values. This is what we have here. So first we're going to create the matrix of interactions between the keys and the queries. So we're going to take the queries. We're going to transpose a different dimension in the keys tensor, such that we can take the batch matrix multiplication operation between the queries and the keys. So the batch matrix multiplication is just a way to consider the fact that we have a batch dimension. The first dimension of the input tensor X is a batch. And the remaining dimensions are going to be the size of the input sequence and the number of elements in each of the vectors in the queries, keys, and values. Now that we took the batch matrix multiplication, we're going to normalize by the square root of the D output. And this is typically done to make sure that the scores are independent of the number of elements that we have in each of the vectors. Now we're going to take those scores and we're going to create the attentions by taking the softmax transformation. So we take those scores and we make sure to normalize in the last dimension of the scores. Finally, we're going to again use the batch matrix multiplication. We're going to take those attentions and we're going to multiply to the values. This is going to create the resulting hidden states. We're going to return this. So let's run this. Here we go. To study a bit the behavior of this attention layer, we're going to create a small example, a toy example, such that we can manipulate some vocabulary and we can create some input sequence. So let's play with that. 
I'm going to first create a start of sequence tokens. So this is the index of a start of sequence token. I'm going to create an end of sequence token. I'm going to call it one. And now I'm going to create a map that is going to map from index to the words. So I'm going to have words in my vocabulary and I'm going to create this map from the index to the words. So first I'm going to have the start of sequence token index with the token SOS. Then I'm going to have the end of sequence token with the token EOS. And then I'm going to create a very, very small vocabulary. This very small vocabulary, I'm going to learn it from this very small data set. So this very small data set is a set of tokens or words that we have in those sentences. How are you doing? I am good and you. So to make it simpler, I created some spaces between the question marks such that we can directly split on the white spaces. Obviously, it would be a bit more complicated in a real case. But here, I'm simplifying things. So let's make sure that we extract the different tokens from this data set. So we're going to take the words, we're going to lowercase the different words, and we're going to split on white space. Then we're going to take the resulting sets of tokens that exist in this data set in such a way that I have only unique tokens. So this is my words list. Then I'm going to iterate through the words list. So word by word, I'm going to just inject in the index to words map the index, the index is just going to be the current size of the index to words map. And I'm just going to inject the word itself. Let's take this index to word map and we're going to see the resulting map. So the resulting map is just a dictionary where as key, we have the index of the words and as values, we have the words themselves. Now I'm going to take this map and I'm going to invert it. Now I'm going to create another map that I'm going to call words to index. So I'm just going to invert the current map. So I take the index to words and I take the different keys and values and I just invert them. So let's see the result. I just inverted the map such that the keys are the words and the values are the indexes. Now, I'm going to create a function that is going to be able to take a sentence and is going to create a PyTorch tensor such that I can input it into a PyTorch model. So let's create this function. I'm going to call it convert to tensors. It's going to take as argument a sentence. It's going to take this sentence. It's going to lower it and it's going to split on white spaces. Then I'm going to take my map, the words to index map, and for each of the words in the words list, I'm just going to convert those words into their related index. So this is just a list of the indexes that are found in this map here, words to index. Now I just need to take those indexes and make sure that I convert those indexes into a PyTorch tensor. I need to specify that the data type is torch long, and I'm just going to induce a new dimension that is going to basically be the batch dimension that is going to be found at the beginning of the tensor. So let's try this function. I'm going to take the sentence that we saw here, and I'm going to create a new sentence. I'm going to call it sentence. I'm going to remove some of it and I'm going to pass this sentence to this function. And now we have a resulting PyTorch tensor. This function converted this sentence into a PyTorch tensor of indexes. So let's put this into a variable and let's study a bit this indexes variable. So let's look at the size. So you see that we have this one here, which is the fake dimension I injected here. And five is the number of tokens that I have in my input sentence. Let's now create a very small neural network 
in such a way that we can study a bit what's happening with this attention layer. So I'm going to create a couple of constants. So the hidden size, I'm going to set it to 10, which is a number of elements that we have in each of the vectors. I'm going also to have the vocabulary size, which is going to be the length of the words to index map. And I'm going to create a embedding. So this embedding is coming from the neural network package from PyTorch. And it's going to have as many rows that they are words in the vocabulary. And the rows will have a size, hidden size. Now I'm going to create a, an attention layer. It's going to have as input dimension the hidden size and the output dimension the hidden size as well. So the linear layers are going to be squared. Now I'm going to have a sentence. How are you doing? Question mark. I'm going to take the convert to tensors function and I'm going to create an input tensor. So this function is going to take a text sentence and convert it into a PyTorch tensor of indexes. And I'm going to take this input tensor and I'm going to pass it to the embedding. So this is going to create a set of vectors. So let's look at those vectors. So let's look at the size of it. So here is the size of this resulting tensor. One is the dimensionality of the batch. We only have one sample. Five is the number of tokens in the input sequence. So this is a sequence length. And 10, this is the number of elements that we have in each of the different vectors. Now we're going to take this embedded tensor and we're going to pass it to the attention layer. So we're going to create a resulting set of hidden states. And now we have the hidden states. So let's look at those hidden states. This is a, just a random set of values, but let's look at the size of it. And we can see that this hidden states tensor has the same dimension that this embedded tensor. So to understand a bit further how this attention mechanism works, we're going to dissect it a bit further. So let me copy paste the different elements that we have in this attention layer. I'm going to remove the self and I'm going to pass as the dimension in, I'm going to make it hidden size and the dimension out, I'm going to make it hidden size. Now let's create those linear layers. So we have those linear layers. So let's take Q, K, and V, and we're going to pass the embedded tensor to those. We're going to get the queries by taking Q and passing the embedded vector. And we're going to do the same with the two other linear layers. So we're going to have the keys with K, and we're going to get the values with V. So let's run this. So let's look at the dimensionality of those resulting tensors. So you can see that we have the dimensionality that is exactly the same. So we have one that is a dimensionality of the batch. We have only one element in that data set. Then we have five, which is the number of tokens in the input sequence. And we have 10, which is the number of elements in each of the vectors in our queries or embedded vectors. Let's do the same with keys. We have exactly the same dimension IT. No surprise here. Now let's take the following operation in the forward function. We take the batch matrix multiplication between the queries and the keys. So let's look at the scores. We have one for the batch dimensionality and we have five by five. Five is the number of elements in the input sequence. So we have a square matrix if we don't count the batch dimension, that is given by this batch matrix multiplication. So if we were to keep the transpose like it was, it would not work. So that's why we have this transpose operation. Now, let's take the softmax transformation. We first normalize the scores by the DAO dimensionality square root, and we take the softmax transformation of the scores. So let's do that. And let's look at the resulting attentions. The attentions is exactly the same size than the scores matrix. So this is good. Now let's look at the sum. If we sum on the dimension 82, we're going to see that each of the rows sum to one. 
So we have what we discussed about earlier, that the softmax transformation is just a way to map from scores to probability scores. So we have this. And now we're going to take the batch matrix multiplication between the attentions and the values. So let's do that. By doing so, we are recovering a tensor that has the same size than the input tensor that we had originally in the attention layer. So we have one, which is the dimensionality of the batch, five, which is the dimensionality of the number of elements in the input sequence, and 10 is a hidden size. Here you saw the way the different operations are happening in the attention layer. So it should be easier for you now to understand how this layer works.